Representative Mo Brooks is facing a tough reelection battle, a tough Republican primary. And Donald Trump, of course, decided to pull his endorsement for Mo Brooks after Mo Brooks refused to continue peddling lies about the outcome of the 2020 election. Now, all of a sudden, Brooks is begging Trump to endorse him again, which means it's time to take a trip on the beta bus. You are a beta male. Now, you may have noticed a tweet from Mo Brooks where he writes, MAGA Nation, here's my story. Join me in asking President Trump to reendorse Mo so that we can send a message to Mitch McConnell by sending a real America First conservative to the Senate on June 21st. But if you think that's bad, it's about to get much, much worse. He included a statement. That reads as follows, my Alabama Senate primary is in a couple of weeks against an establishment rhino named Katie Britt. I had President Trump's endorsement at the beginning, but then Mitch McConnell spent millions on TV attacking me. At that time, it looked like our campaign was going nowhere. And sadly, this is the best part, President Trump pulled his endorsement. But then a funny thing happened, Mitch McConnell quit attacking us. Our campaign surged and we made it into the runoff. Now it gets so much more embarrassing for Brooks where he says, I think President Trump knew what he was doing. He gave our campaign the kick in the pants we needed. Thank you, thank you, Daddy Trump. May I have another thank you, Daddy Trump? It's so pathetic, Oh my God. He was like a football coach, he says. He was like a football coach grabbing us by the face mask and getting us in gear. Part of me wonders if he also knew that in pulling his endorsement, he'd bait old Mitch into thinking we couldn't win and get Mitch to stop attacking us. Whether that was the plan or not, it worked and we made it into the runoff. No, it's, it's, it's amazing. MAGA Nation, join me in asking President Trump to reendorse Mo. I am the MAGA candidate. I am the Trump candidate. I am the only candidate who will fight for the America First agenda, including defending our Second Amendment rights against Mitch and his loyal loyalist attempts to appease the left. Yeah, Oof, that's a catastrophe right there. Um, so, I think there's some chance that if Trump asked, I think there's actually a fairly decent chance. If Trump asked them to perform a sex act on him, they probably would. Total, hundred percent. No, I believe, I believe it. Yeah, I believe. Um, it. Uh, Mo Brooks would be like, "Can I get Mo of that?" <laughs> okay. So seriously, uh, Mo Brooks, I gave him credit the other day because uh, it was an accidental admission. I think I didn't know he didn't know he was being taped. Lauren Windsor of the Undercurrent uh, shot uh, a speech of his to supporters where he said, "Yeah." You have to accept, basically he said, you have to accept bribes to get any chairmanship of a committee in, in Congress. If there's about a million dollars that you have to contribute to your own party, both Republicans and Democrats do it. And you usually get that million dollars from the group that you're supposed to be regulating on that committee. I mean, it was a perfect description of corruption in Washington. Not a single mainstream media outlet picked it up. We talked to Lauren Windsor about it. She went and brought it to all of them and they all said, we refuse to cover that story. Uh, so I'm fair, I can't stand Mo Brooks, but I give him credit for being honest about that. And here he's being honest, he, he, he's a cock and he, he likes being humiliated publicly. Is this what traditional masculinity is for the yeah. Republican Party? Because I look at that and I think, wow, what a, a coward, a self-interested buffoon, uh, someone who, I mean, look, this, this tweet honestly uh, sums it up perfectly. Mo, wouldn't it be easier to just mail him your testicles? Yeah. Perfect. No, it's absolutely true. Is that is that what traditional masculinity is for the Republican Party? Because I've seen one Republican lawmaker after the next debase themselves, humiliate themselves just to suck up to Daddy Trump because they want to maintain their position of power. So they'll do anything and everything necessary. Like a real man, like I when I think about masculinity or strong men, right? I don't think about whether or not they lift or whether or not, you know, they're 
I mean, for Republicans, it's like beating their wives or making sure that they're submissive to them, right? No, it's not what I think about with masculinity. I think about a confident person who's comfortable in his own skin, who stands up for the right things, not just stands up for his own personal interests, right? Someone who cowers to Donald Trump, that's what masculinity is, that's what strength is. I look at that and I look at, I see weakness. Of course. I mean, a huge lady boner killer. Yeah, no, I, I think that on, there's two different things here. One, Republicans are cowards uh, almost by definition because they're afraid of everything. Oh, I'm afraid of Latinos coming across the border. I'm afraid of Muslims doing this. I'm afraid of black people doing that. Afraid, afraid, afraid women are gonna be independent. Afraid, 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 right? So, and that's what makes a conservative conservative, fear. They're fear of the others, right? Fear of change, that, that defines who they are. So uh, right wingers, Almost all of them by nature are fearful. But then there's a second layer to it, and that's why you see the beta bus filled with Republican politicians. Politicians are cowards by nature. They almost all of them are weak servants of someone else, mm -hmm. right? So on the Democratic side, 95% of the party are weak servants of the corporate donors. And they will do whatever the donors tell them to do. That used to be the case in the Republican Party. It used to be that 100% of the Republican Party were servants of the donor class, right? But now they have a new master, and their master is Donald Trump. So then now they serve him. Because that's the that's what they do for a living. They beg for money and power, and then they serve the people who gave them the money and the power. So again, in an ironic way, Mo Brooks is being honest. He's saying, oh, yeah, I'm a bitch. And I will, and I will do anything for Donald Trump, and so yeah, I will just debase myself. I you remember the story we covered of the guy who pooped in his in a, in a bag and then shoved it in somebody's face? Trump could do that to Mo Brooks, and he'd be like, "Yes, I'm back, I'm back." I think uh, Trump. I'm not like if we put this idea in Trump's head, he might literally do it. It's called prima nocta. Kings used to have it, the right to have sex with your wife, even before you do. Okay, so Trump, come on, man! What do you, they're offering themselves to? You. Why not take their wives as a as a price for endorsement? Have sex with Mrs. Brooks. If these He'll lawmaker, if these lawmakers are so ready and willing to debase themselves for their own self interests, right? Like in this case, maintaining his Senate seat. Think about what they're willing to do to you. Like that's, I mean, that is, it's so telling how much they're willing to humiliate themselves just for power. Because at the end of the day, it's, it is all about them, right? It's not about representing anyone. It's not about governing. It's not about making the country a better place. It's all about me, 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 me. And if in the short term, I have to humiliate myself, if I have to debase myself, I'm willing to do it because at the end of the day, it'll pay off. It's me, 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 position of power. Again, not to make anyone's life better. But to further enrich himself. That's what almost every lawmaker is doing right now. The reason why Congress doesn't get anything done is because that's not their number one priority. Their number one priority is to get rich, either while they're in Congress by trading stocks, individual stocks with insider information, something we'd go to prison for, by the way, or when they're out of Congress, right? When that revolving door is something they could take benefit from, and they could go work as a lobbyist and rake in millions doing that. Our whole system is set up so we lose in the end. They might lose in the short term by humiliating themselves, but in the end, it's really the American people who miss out on honestly what we could have, which is a decent country that actually has leaders that represent us in our best interests. Since I'm not a coward, I would never ever trade my dignity for power. But that's what politicians do all the time. Mo all Brooks time. is just the latest example. Thanks for watching The Young Turks, I really appreciate it. Another way to show support is through YouTube memberships. You'll get to interact with us more. There's live chat emojis, badges. You've got emojis of me, Anna, John, JR. So those are super fun. But you also get playback of our exclusive member only shows and specials right after they air. So all that, all you gotta do is click that join button right underneath the video. Thank you.